Welcome back inside West Edmonton Mall. Rory McGoran alongside Theo Tutkaluk as we get set for game three of the Brick Invitational opening day. Team Minnesota down there to our broadcast left and Team Detroit down to our broadcast right. It's game three and we've been treated with two very close games to open up the day. Both 2-1 wins. The Toronto Bulldogs over Toronto Pole Hockey picked up the victory and then just recently the two-time defending champion Team Connecticut Junior Rangers defeat Saskatchewan Junior Pats 2-1 in double overtime with a goal from Jack Brayman. Not only double overtime, but a power play double overtime. Three on two, something that is very hard to defend as we saw the Junior Pats have. But I would like to give a quick shout out to our first All-Americans yes. uh, team tonight. We, we had a couple of Canadians. We had a Canadian-American. Now we have two American squads. Happy Independence Day. July 4th. That's right. Happy Independence Day for all of our listeners and viewers down south of the border. And it's Detroit against Minnesota. As we'll take a look now at the teams that will battle in game three. Both doing a little bit of a warm-up. They got their ceremonial pictures taken, which every team will do prior to their first game of the tournament. And this game brought to you by Camel Transport. If you need to get somewhere, go with Camel Transport. When you're in a hump. Not, not my best tagline. I'll work when, on it. When you're in a hump. Oh, gotcha. That's a better one, yeah. Um, something about water. Something about long distance. That's a good one. We'll work on it. We'll, we'll, work, we'll, on it. we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Campbell, we'll we got it. Yeah, we'll brainstorm. Don't worry, Campbell we'll Transport. But they are your sponsor today. It's Team Minnesota against Detroit Red Wings. Of course, coming up next, you got the Montreal Canadiens and Team Pennsylvania. Team Chicago against the Western Selects. Brick Alberta will make their first appearance at 350 against the BC Junior Canucks. It is a full slate of games. Both Detroit and Minnesota will actually play two games today. Minnesota's back on the ace at 530 against Manitoba. Detroit, the late game at 850 against the Western Selects. Not only do they have to play two games on the first day, but they also have to get used to this ice and the fact that, you know, it's a little bit different setting. I mean, playing in a mall, different temperature, a lot happens on the outside, and you don't want to get distracted from the game at hand that occurs in the 180 by 85 year. We're told that this is a smaller rink. Looks a little small, but to an 11-year-old, 10-year-old, I think it's just the right size. So Team Minnesota down to our broadcast left, of course. Goaltenders for Minnesota. Not certain which one will get the nod in game one, but Graham Olsen wears number 30, and Casper Obrokta with number 74. As for the Detroit Junior Red Wings, it is Nolan Blankish in number 31, and Colin Ferguson in number 35. Love the old school North Star colors, yeah. as well as the old school red, like these are the new Red Wing jerseys, not the old ones, but Shout out to the dads under the Go Team Minnesota sign for moving away during the uh, early beginnings of this warm-up. Team Minnesota was rifling pucks off the dinger, off the crossbars. <laughs> and the dads were getting blocked left and right. They had to move away from the behind the net so that uh, they don't get hit. The game hasn't even started, fellas. Well, if you can, get a look at number 97 on Detroit, Dominic Simeon. I'm pretty sure he's wearing blue sunglasses underneath his cage got to protect himself from the elements and not I'm only seeing him from far away so I could be mistaken but of course here in West Edmonton Mall a dome covering the ice surface and you know only some of those panels shaded over so sun can come in and be kind of uh, an element you got to take into consideration here in West Edmonton Mall we are certainly seeing the uh, the black eyes yeah a lot of that that's good stuff a lot of the eye black I used to wear that for football. Never for hockey, but for football, yes. Not even on the outdoor? A little eye black on? Didn't even play a lot of outdoor games back in the day. I mean, when you're 7 and 8, you got the 6 a.m. mini, the 6 a.m. games on the outdoor rinks, but we didn't have eye black back then. As we'll get ready for tonight's national anthem, it is game three. An all-American team. I actually have to apologize. It's Carmel Transport. My Carmel. eyes, yeah, it, it missed right, so... Uh, when you need the sweetest transport in the world, go to Carmel Transport. That's the one today. <laughs> for game number three is the lineup along the blue line, and we'll go down to ISLO for tonight's reconciliation and national anthem.
Yeah, the scene is set here in game number three. Team Minnesota taking on Team Detroit. And I believe it was a, uh, might have been an old Detroit Red Wings fashion. A squid was thrown on the ice, except thrown from the upper deck. And when it hit the ice, it splattered into two. Yes. You thought it was a bird. I didn't know what it was. It wasn't <laughs> flying. It's, that's all I know. It wasn't flying. Let's have a look, see. It's a squid. Oh, okay, it is a squid. Okay. And a, the brave referee. The brave referee doing it old school Red Wing style without the glove on, but he's not flinging it around his head. Nonetheless, he's got a bit of a smile on it. Well, they also got a hole. They tried to shave some snow. I'm going to say the shovel might need to come out and collect some of this snow that's right in front of the blue line, but it was a squid, yes, in old Detroit Red Wings fashion. Of course it was. However, uh, maybe don't throw it from the upper deck here of the West Edmonton Mall Arena because that's about a 40-foot drop, <laughs> and that squid splattered into two. That's, uh, squids don't usually fall from that height. I don't think squids fall at all. They swim. They swim, that's right. <laughs> Especially when they hit a hard surface like ice, it's kind of done for. I will, I will comment on the jerseys yet again. Gorgeous. Not only do I love the old-school 90s North Stars, but the new-school Minnesota Wild is fantastic. Um, great job. And the third jersey that the moms are wearing, I don't know if you can see it there, Roy, but it's the green and white striped. Yep. The I'm support group. The support for group for the Minnesota crew. Love the signage. Minnesota came in full force. Yes, as is Detroit. Down to our broadcast right there. As we're going to look now at your starting netminders. Lost my sheets, Theo. Uh-oh. We're back. Looks like it's going to be for Minnesota in Casper Obrokta is going to get the start for Minnesota. And Nolan Blankish, as you're pointing at for Detroit. Yes, it will be Blankish. It'll be Obrokta. As game three, and how about the first two games we've had? Great performances by all four teams, but closely contested. Both 2-1 wins. Both 2-1 wins, both very good defensive games. Uh, we Obviously, you realize it's a th also another rule of things we have to mention, Rory, here. It's not just a two-point win. Um, the three points goes for a win in regulation. Yep. And two points and one point if it goes to overtime. As puck is dropped and we're underway here with game three of the Brick Invitational, Detroit and Minnesota. As it's sent in by Haringa. Scoop now back up, Jack Kaiser. Kaiser trying to enter the zone, can't. He's stopped up by Lance. Lance now stripped back by Kaiser, trying to feed Jarvie. Simeon gonna knock him off balance. Lee going back for it. Both those players stumble into the corner. Lee gives it a whack and knocks it outside the zone. Back for a two on two in Detroit. Dragging, firing, that's Hiringa. In towards the corner, a couple bodies down again in front of the Minnesota support staff. And a penalty coming up against Minnesota, an early penalty. It is a boarding call, I do believe, and just 42 seconds in, it looks like Detroit's gonna go to the power play. Yeah, I think it's gonna be number four, the defenseman, Owen Plude there. He, uh, they collided, Haringa and Plude collided. I think we were going for a loose buck. I guess they thought the Minnesota defender went in with a little more aggression. Hence him getting the two minutes. So we'll see a first look of the power play for the Red Wings. Jared Thorne will take the face off, wins it back. It's on towards the defenseman and driving it back down low. Is Vinny Mirandi can't hold the zone and hustling back for it is Banda. Trying to shake free Detroit out of their own zone. Gone a minute and four seconds into this game. Here comes Miranda in far side. Looking to get through the defenseman of Minnesota. Nothing happening there and sent back out to Detroit zone. And Drew Corbin, far side now near. Here comes Blaze. Blay with a shot. That one stopped as it was all stifled up by Schillings. Another chance and a big save there. As jumping out to the top of the crease, making the save. Was Obrockta. And all the way around the net for Corbin. Already half the power play gone. Remind everyone viewing tonight's power play brought to you by Kachuk Advisor Group at Scotia Wealth Management. 
Erat trying to work it in. Schilling's following him. It's sent all the way back out to center ice. Minnesota, great job here on the power play. No shots for Detroit yet. Now keep the penalty kill, pardon me. Keeping everything to the sides. Very important for these teams because a lot of the shots do come from the side, but at the same time, not the high quality ones. Racing back down is Corbin. Trying to be the first one on it is Kaiser. Kaiser does get it for Minnesota. Kaiser now going for a little bit of a lap. Still with it, killing off a lot of the time. Kaiser, plenty of speed here. It works off the wall. Still with it, Kaiser. Try, trying to skate around all five power play players for Detroit. And then gets the shot on net. And that one stopped by the Detroit netminder in Blankish. I think he skated about 150 <laughs> feet back and forth doing those uh, little loop-de-loops. Reminded me of like the Sunday morning uh, public skate, but he had a method to his madness getting a shot on net at the end of it. 9.37 left here in the first period. Scoreless tie as 18 seconds remain. It's chipped out of the zone there by Campbell. Erat trying to follow it up, the bouncing puck. He gets a little bit of attention from Jack Allgood. All the way back in for Minnesota. Working it outside the zone or trying to. Stepping back up into it was Andrew Deskins. He gets some help now. Shot coming. Stop from Obrachta. Now out of the box and a stretch pass looking to hit him. Easton Hansen coming in for Minnesota. Worked up and a little bit of a body contact there as he knocks in the off balance. A chance to shoot. Scores. Jammed in at the side of the net. And it's Colton Chatlin going to get the game's opening goal as Allgood set it up and Chatlin knocked it home. one nothing Minnesota. I think it was more of an opportunistic bounce off the side of the net for the Minnesota team. And Allgood stirring up the puck out of the corner, throwing it off the net. And there was, like you said, number 11, Colton Chatlin making no mistake, throwing it above the netminder for a one nothing start for Team Minnesota. You take a look at the coaches of the Minnesota team throughout the whole tournament. They've constantly been impressing us with their get-ups and their outfits of wearing. And once again, another uh, another bright display there from the coaches of Minnesota. But you'll notice that every game they're always wearing something different. Let's see how that trend continues. Yeah. Prior game in the playoffs two days ago, one was in a bright green jumpsuit. I tell you, man, they're they're here to like one of those jumpsuits you saw, at, like Vancouver Canucks family box. Uh, no, not a not one of those not spandex a, not a man suits. suits. No, okay. no, no, more like a windbreaker material. That's better. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it's a little more, a little more tasteful. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they brought the spandex green, hope, green man not. suit. <laughs> the green man suits, yes. Is flipping it out through the blue line now, bouncing it at center, trying to get it. Was Herring yeah, followed up by Reed? Nice little move. Now flips into the corner. Bouncing over the stick of Marouk. This one changing on the defense. Corbin for Detroit. Will knock it into the corner. A couple players go in. One was Shilton. Now coming out with the puck is Shilgan. He'll feed it up to Williamson. Williamson, long wrist shot into the glove. And that one held by Blankish. And yeah, he'll hold it for a whistle. 7.48 left in the first. Blankish and Abrakta, two of the smaller goalies we've seen this morning thus far, going to have to play really big to cover up a lot of that net. Flashing the leather, there was Blankish to keep it a one nothing game. Austin Jarvie coming in for Minnesota on the faceoff. Trying to knock that puck down low. Does it now? Backdoor pass. Just missed. All good. Back at the line, Alex Hare. He'll send a shot wide. Rattles off the back wall. Now in around the net, near side. Hopeman, Hopeman slithers it along the boards, trying to get it out as Detroit. Hopeman, another great drop at the line, holding it in. Kaiser goes down to Jarvie, all good towards the net. The pass coming and hits the body of Corbin. Trailer almost got that one in, was Hare. All good, back behind the goaltender. And now finally worked out here by Detroit. 7.15 left in the period. 1-0 Minnesota. Back near side, shot by Blay. Now coming in off the bench is Simeon. Simeon runs into a player. Both of them pop down to the ice. Simeon's lost one of his gloves. Has to hustle back to pick it up, and that'll allow Jarvie to clear the zone. Austin Jarvie wide down the right wing. Jarvie now trying to get wide around Lee. Kicks it from a skate to a stick. Now over skates it, and Lee will dust it off into a corner. Before Detroit sends it in, Blay. Will knock it back into Minnesota zone. Schilling's back for it. Stick check by Thorne. Thorne out in front. And unable to connect with, I believe that was William Banda at the side of the net. Back comes Schilling's. 
Far side play, trying to get up to Kaiser. Jarva and all good along with Kaiser, but they couldn't enter cleanly. Back out. There's Erat. Far side. Detroit attacking, looking to get towards the front of the net. That was Vinny Mirandi. And now Jarvie maybe has a step. Jarvie in, waiting for his mate to join, trying to float a pass across, but couldn't get there quick enough. Was Colton, or pardon me, was Colton Chatlin. Now Lee in his own zone. Six minutes left here in the first period. Got a little bit tripped up and a penalty coming up here as Detroit's going to go on to the power play. Ulrich, I believe it was, will head towards the penalty box. Two minutes for tripping and a second power play opportunity here for Detroit. Yeah, Tate Ulrich just did not move his legs far and quick enough and tripped up the Detroit player, Isaac Lee, as he escaped into the neutral zone. We're going to see the power play for Detroit here. Tripping is the call. Power play brought to you by Kachuk Advisory Group at Scotia Wealth Management. Face off coming towards the glove hand side of the goaltender in a Brockta. It'll be sent around the boards. And smack down the ice to center ice. Our side pass, looking to break this one back in is Brennan Martin, but a turnover. In comes Williamson, a chance, backhand, scores! Short-handed goal by Kane Christensen. It was in Minnesota with a shorty lead 2-0. Okay, Christian read that play like he wrote it. Right at the top of that circle in the neutral zone, picking off that pass. Clear breakaway from the red line in. One of my favorite moves, fake shot score. And uh, it makes it a 2-0 game for Team Minnesota. Detroit Junior Red Wings here trying to give their goaltender a little bit of a rally here. Leaving them kind of hanging to dry on that last one. It was a little bit rough. Uh, quick start for the Minnesota squad as they're up two. Yeah, tough one for Nolan Blankish. No fault of his own as shorthanded. Gave up a breakaway and a nice little move forehand, backhand. Stretched open that far side. And Cade Christensen going to get the second goal of the game. And we have a preempted whistle. So we're going to have it at center ice, I believe. They thought it was icing. Yeah, they're going to move it at center, it looks like. Unassisted is the goal by Cade Christensen. So his first of the tournament, Colton Chatlin got the first one. Cade Christensen, the second one. And it's 2 0 for Minnesota. As Lance trying to get the goal scoring started for Detroit. Far cross ice pass. That's broken up by Schillings. Another breakaway. This time it's Williamson. Williamson shoots. Stopped by Blankish. And a big save there to keep it 2 nothing. Great save. Great poise by the net minded for the Red Wings. Equal to the test. Tries to go upstairs on the glove side. But he said, nah, -uh, not right now. I'm keeping this 2 nothing." Almost identical plays there. A nice little stretch pass, though, by Schillings. His faceoff's not done right. First time it was Christensen. I thought it was Williamson. And then, lo and behold, Williamson gets a breakaway right after. Yeah, Schillings made that great pass yeah. from about five feet inside his blue line, noticing that Williamson was wide open just over the red line. As inside, Detroit zone. Lance on the faceoff. It's one back by Minnesota. Schillings, he'll take a shot. This one off the post. Screen in front and finds Iron. Another good shot by Schillings. Been impressed with him on the blue line, number 97. Picked up by Owen Plude. He'll drive it inside the attacking zone. Detroit now three on two, still 58 seconds on the power play. It's Lance. Lance will work it wide. Fire a shot off the body. There of Schillings. Gives his man a little bit of a shove. Now moves the puck around the wall, trying to jump in. Look out, a little bit of a collision there. Detroit holds the zone though. Lance can't get it to the front. Schillings again, he'll pick it up. Race all the way down the ice. Staying on side was Chatlin. Schillings shoots. Stop by Blankish. How good has Schillings been in the first period? Cut some wheels. Head manning will play. I like that kind of defenseman. Near side for Reed. Toe drags around. Schillings gets back, forces Reed towards the wall. Unable to locate the puck, and now Chatlin will come back the other way. Jatlin had the first goal of the game, fires another wrist shot that's in the glove of Blankish, and we're going to stop it to play. 4.07 left in the first period, shots on goal 7-2, favoring Minnesota. 7-2, Minnesota certainly has had the offensive prowess thus far in the first. Detroit has to seam up their defense a little bit to not allow that stretch pass. 
as they allowed two breakaways already in the first period. They're getting a little discussion there from their head coach on the bench. As Hare falls down on the puck and on the blue line, but Minnesota stays onside. Now back is Christensen. He gets taken down to the corner. It's going to be a penalty going up against Detroit and the Minnesota team. Minnesota heading towards a power play. Going to try to make this a 3-0 game. Certainly that was textbook holding. Uh, one arm off the stick, one hand around the body. Corral him to the ice in the corner. And that'll be William Banda, the defenseman for the Junior Red Wings, sitting down for two or less. Short bench, two for Minnesota. Three less players on Team Minnesota than Team Detroit. See about five defensemen they have on the team. So you'll probably be hearing a lot of the likes of Schillings and everyone on the blue line. Hare, as this one flipped out to Kaiser, forward, manning the point on the power play. It's going to be jumped up shorthanded. Thorne, can they find one? Shot, this one just wide. We've seen three shorthanded goals already this tournament. It's only the third game. It's, a, it's the trend of the morning. <laughs> Plude will work it back in down the right. Plude now. Gets a little bit tripped up, no call. Minnesota with minute and 30 seconds. It's Banda that got the hook on that call. Put Minnesota to the power play. All good. Kaiser now. Kaiser fires a long shot. Stopped by Blankish. Rebound into the corner. And carried away now by Vinnie Morandi. Here goes Morandi. Shorthanded again. Drives his way in. Puck settles underneath him. And now it's found by Tate Ulrich. He'll feed all good. All good's got Jarvie with him. Trying to drag it around Lee. Minute left on the power play for Minnesota. Lee all tied up with Allgood. Works it to the wall. Now it's found by Ulrich out in front, trying to get to Allgood. Jarview is also there, and now a shorthanded rush for Detroit. Feeds it up to Morandi, but offside. Going to be called 2.39 left here in the first period at 2 nothing for Minnesota. Now Erat just needed to take a couple extra strides to get over the blue line before passing that puck over to his forward man there. Vinny Mirandi. Good skating by both teams thus far. Just to mention this game brought to you by Carmel Transport. If you're in a sticky situation, Carmel Transport. I think I can fire out a couple more throughout this game. Far side, bringing it back in for Minnesota. Sent in, a one-timer chance, but a great defensive play by Lee. He's been busy already in this game. Now up top. Dragging the blue line, Hare tipped in front, scores! A deflection will poke it up and over the net of Blankish and leading the charge, scoring the goal, the second one of the game for Chase Williamson. Yeah, Williamson snuck in there right in front of Blankish, the goaltender. Blankish thought he was gonna be able to hold on to that puck, no problem, and then Williamson just tips it with his stick. About three feet in front of him to give the Minnesota squad a three nothing lead early in the, or, Sorry, almost at the end of the first period here. Two minutes and 12 seconds left. Slap shot from the point. I think it was Hare. Alex Hare will find out who gets the assist. But a beautiful tip by Williamson that just lifted it about a foot and a half off the ground and over the stretched out pad of Blankish. 3 nothing Minnesota. Power play goal. Defense, 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 defense. Minnesota fans even got their own chant for this team already. They're ready to rock. They're good at spelling. Minnesota, tough word for you? Or? It's always one of those Minneapolis, <laughs> Minnesota, Mississippi. Well, you can learn something from them then. I'm looking at the sign currently, <laughs> yes, to make sure they spelled it correctly, and they did. Well done. 10 to 2, the shots on goal, 148 left in the first period. 3 to nothing for Minnesota. Uh, Chatlin with the opener. Hare and Marouk were the assists on the Williamson goal. Williamson. Picking up his second goal of the tournament. Maybe one to keep an eye on throughout this brick invitational. Number 91 for the Minnesota. Here's Hopeman with a loose puck battle. Will knock it inside Detroit zone. Back for it goes Corbin. Corbin dumps it back in for Hansen. Hansen will drag it inside the attacking end. Hansen now trying to find a shot. Drop pass, no one there. Reed will drag it back out for Detroit. Looking ahead for Mirandi. Lance now trying to stretch in a pass, hitting him, bounces off his stick. 
Yeah, we haven't said too much, but it'll be covered up by Obrocta. Nice little feed there from Mirandi to Lance, but bounced off the stick and rolled a little too far. He saw the speed entering the zone, realized that there was an open lane there, gave it to his forward man, Mirandi. Just couldn't put it past the goaltender, Obrocta. Had the paddle down. Obrocta's faced three shots, stopped them all. Now Simeon working it down the boards. Got to think for Team Minnesota, too. It's a nice, obviously, advantage to have. You have I think you counted 14 of, the, 14 of these players on the same team. Jarvie shot, rebound, crushing the net. And unable to find it was Kaiser. But 14 of them play for the Minnesota Blades on their regular season minor team. So the camaraderie and the consistency is uh, constantly there for these teams. No doubt. It's something that's it's hard to build when you don't have everyone on the same page all the time. But these players have been playing all season long together, minus two of them. Now dusts it off, walks the line, bringing it in his hair. Backdoor pass and just missing that one is all good. What a feed. And that was Owen Plude, not hair, but how about the vision on the backdoor feed? That was beautiful. Saw him sitting there, just couldn't put all good. All good just couldn't put the puck into the net. Great pass by Clude. Banda walked in the zone there, but offside was the call. And all good a little frustrated with himself as he knew that was a Backdoor tap in, but pass a little too hot, slipped under his stick, went into the corner. 16 seconds left in the first. As this one is pushed, pushed back, as Deskins trying to jam it into the zone, Ulrich gonna help out. Ulrich bringing it in, cross ice pass, gonna slip under the stick, roll towards the wall, shot coming, stopped by Blankish, a wraparound opportunity, but the final seconds will roll off the board, and Minnesota, what a start. 3 nothing. they lead. A shorthanded goal, a power play goal, and an even strength goal, two of them from Williamson. Yeah, Williamson scoring two of the last the last two goals, sorry. Chatlin starting it off with that early frame goal score. Of Brockta only facing four shots, 11 to four. As I believe we got the highlight here of the third goal so far, the second of the game by Williamson. Coming out of the corner there, getting the blue, takes the shot. And then there it is, gets tipped. I don't know if Blankish thought somebody was interfering with them at the time, but nonetheless, no interference called. And we got a three nothing hockey game. Beautiful tip in front by Williamson. As you'll see it there, shot, and just gets that stick in, lifts it enough over the bar. And a three nothing lead for Minnesota. Coming up after this game at 12.30, Montreal Canadiens will take on Team Pennsylvania. Just a reminder, this game is brought to you by Carmel Transport, the Werther's original of transport companies. It's Carmel Transport. Carmel, not yeah. caramel. So I can't do any caramel conversions of anything. No. Carmel. Carmel. Yeah. A sweet Caroline playing here, getting the fans up on their feet. We'll have another 12-minute second period and 15-minute third period. Of course, we flood in between the second and the third. 11 to four, the shots on goal favor in Minnesota. The 33rd annual Brick Invitational. The 2011 birth through team Minnesota finished first place in the round robin tournament where eventually knocked out in the playoffs to the Western Selects. Minnesota always has that hotbed of hockey, just like every other mm -hmm. province in the state, but something about Minnesota that they just have great hockey players throughout. Face off great. drop, go ahead. One for Erat, Erat, long shot, that one stopped. Good start and a rebound chance, and Martin just pushed it wide. Detroit now, long shot from the point, deflection in front, trying to find it. It's caught up, I believe, in someone's equipment. There it is, it falls out of his glove, because that was in the mick of shillings. He had it, he had it stuck in his elbow looks, and his glove. Like he's he, a little bit shaken up, too. Yeah, he's going to head to the bench there and receive some assistance, I'm sure. But that was a great 30-second start for the Red Wings. They needed to come out hot. Just couldn't beat Obrokta on the right side there with his pad. Great save by the netminder. Obrokta's been good. Six of six so far. 11.41 left here in the second. So on the draw will be Sebastian Erat. Oh, yeah, push it forward. It's stolen off him by Holtman. Holtman and Erat battling in the corner. A couple number 10s coming together. 
Now support for Minnesota. Jumping into the play was Deskins there for Detroit. Trying to push it up the wall, Cade Christensen. One goal already in this game. Holtman battling against Erat. Erat spins off it. Nice little pass to the point, but it received on the backhand of Corbin. Had to fight it to the wall. Corbin. Now inside. Corbin leaves it. Deskins backdoor pass, and this one ricochets off a leg. Deskins gets it back. Great start to the second period here for Detroit. Up top, Campbell. He'll drive it back down. Holtman overskates it. A little move there to shake free, and then a collision to the slot, but Campbell will follow it up. It's been all Detroit, and now they're going to get rewarded for it as they draw a penalty. It's Holtman to the box, and Detroit to the power play, but we've played a minute and 16 seconds here, and it hasn't left a miss on its own. Absolutely right, Roy. You know, the offensive test has been put together here by the Red Wings, and controlling that puck on the far side, but not only that, but rushing the play behind the net, causing the penalty there. We're gonna see the Detroit power play here for the first time, I believe. Um, I believe second time. Second time. That's right, because Mr. Blude had a- uh, Short handy. Yeah, that's right. We had the short handed goal. Power play brought to you by Kachuk Advisory Group and Scotia Wealth Management. As it'll be sent all the way up by Minnesota, looking for more. Here's Kaiser, he's got Shilton. Trying to get it up. Dragging the puck and now taking it out is Campbell. Once again, looking to clear it all the way down the ice is Shilgen, pardon me for the pronunciation. Maverick Shilgen. In towards corner. This one sent around the boards by Shilgen, racing after it. The Detroit defenseman in Banda. It'll be left towards the slot, cleared away by Schilling. He's gonna try to do another stretch pass. He's leading his guy and Kaiser up the ice. Kaiser in wide, backhand, forehand, backhand, stop, rebound, scores. Second shorthanded of the game, Maverick Schilling bangs home the rebound from Jack Kaiser, but who started that play? We've said his name all along. It's Miles Schillings with a great pass outside the zone for another Minnesota. Well, Miles Schillings again with the great up move play there. Head manning the puck. The Detroit defender actually stopped the first one and then cleaning it up was the eventual goal scorer in Shogun. Shogun, that's right. So three different goal scorers for Minnesota, two shorthanded goals. This team's coming back to center ice. Gonna get you a scoring update coming in the next stoppage of play and Minnesota looking for more it's a loose puck and jumping on that one is going to be blankish so a short-handed goal again the second of the day for Minnesota I think you got to keep your eye on Minnesota throughout this tournament a lot of a lot of experts have them as one of the top teams entering the brick for 2011 birth year well, they're certainly showing it in this morning's game. Great skating, great passing. So a chance coming back the other way. Detroit to break the shutout. Shoot, scores! What a shot from Vinny Mirandi. And Detroit's on the board. It's 4-1. to one. Vinny Mirandi taking that loose puck and skating the entire distance down the ice and going low glove side on a Procta. Putting Detroit on the board with a power play marker. Makes it four to one. I think our official scorekeepers missed an assist because that goal that you scored that we saw before this, scored by Shilgen, was only assisted by Kaiser. So Schilling's got left out on that secondary assist, which he definitely should have got. But official score summary on the goal by Shilgen is just assisted, one assist by Kaiser. That one by Vinny Mirandi will get you on the next stoppage of play as Detroit trying to break it back inside Minnesota zone. Deskins across, bounces over the stick of Erat. It'll be found by Corbin. Dips his shoulder wide, now spins back up top. Leading for Lee. Lee a firing a fluttering shot towards the net. A power play goal it was. So a lot of special teams. Kaiser now bringing it back in. Jared Thorne picking up the assist. And yeah, that's the lone assist on the goal. Here comes a two on one. Erat back the other way. Erat in, shoots, stopped by Obrachta. 
All right, big save too, and the rebound cleared away from any Detroit's crash in the net. 8.40 left in the second period, four to one here for Minnesota. Shots on goal favoring Minnesota as well, 13 to seven. Back into the corner, stretched out. Here's Hansen. Hansen will work it in, rolling puck, gonna fire it. That one blocked in front, rebound right to Kaiser. Gonna look to drop for Hare. Or pardon me, that's Marouk. Back behind the net, battling for it was Easton Hansen following Kaiser. Now Deskins will deflect that one, but up and out of play. And we're going to stop it to play with 8-11 remaining. 8-11, 13-8 are the shots in favor of the Wild. We've mentioned Schilling's name several times here this morning already. He's actually sitting on the bench getting some attention. He's blocked the shot with his elbow. He's tried to glove a couple with his left hand. So that left arm, that left wing of his, maybe needing a little bit worse for wear. So the face off towards the glove hand side of Blankish. Sun now again must have peeked through a, a cloud as you can see the ice surface getting lit up. Now about 80% of it's covered as now both goalies in the sun. Is down low, Erat trying to drive it in. Here's Lance around the net, squeezed off the puck. And a penalty, though, coming up. They're going to call that body contact along the boards. And Detroit going back to the power play. They do have one power play goal. That's their lone goal. However, they have allowed two shorthanded goals against. So it's gone both ways for Detroit. It has. Chase Williamson getting two-minute call there for body contact. Just, I mean, a little bit of rubbing is okay, but when it comes to aggressiveness like that, that's that discretionary call, and the official uh, is explaining that to the Minnesota bench as to the line to which was crossed by Williamson. Well, Williamson is an assist away from a brick invitational Gordie Howe hat trick. That's what I was just getting. A, get, I was a just penalty, a goal, that. and an assist. Is that what we're going to go with? That's okay. what we're going with, yeah. All right. <laughs> Great game for Williamson for sure, but Detroit back on the power play, trying to get back within two. Still tons of time in this game. But once again, are they going to try another stretch pass? Almost caught shorthanded. And Christensen scored once on a breakaway shorthanded. Almost had his second. So body contact the call on Williamson. Now dancing his way in his lance. Watched along the far side by Hopeman. Dug out into the corner. Blake Reed looking to center that one. Unable to find it for Hiringa. Long shot from the point, did a pad save down. Rebound chance, Hiringa swooped it around the net. Another one, open door, Hiringa fires, scores! All opportunity in front of the net, and it bounced straight to Hiringa, wide open cage. Abrakta couldn't get back in time. And it's a 4-2 game, another power play goal. Power play working well for Detroit there, buzzing all around the net, below the line, above the line, getting the Minnesota defense running without their assignments. And you saw Haringa there corral that loose puck on the close post here and get it above Obrokta, who was all stretched out, wondering, where is my help? A couple of big saves, and now Obrokta getting looked at by the referee. Maybe stretched a little too far. We'll see if he stays in the game. No, it looks like there's going to be a goaltending change coming for Minnesota. As it is Casper Obrokta and... He was moving back and forth, trying to stop the puck. Of course, all that chaos in front of the net, but maybe pulled something. Seems to be pointing at his shoulder area. But we're going to get a goaltending change, and in comes Graham Olsen. As Detroit, two straight goals to get back within two. Let up the ice to Kaiser. Kaiser trying to split the defense. His shot's blocked. Good one there by Bennett Campbell. Back in towards the half wall, all good after it. All good now, works up the wall, all good, shoots, stopped by Blankish. Another chance, out in front, and Blankish makes a save. There's Plude. Back come the Red Wings. Mirandi already with one goal, Mirandi right to the net, backhand, and that one stopped. Rebound lands right in front of Olsen, and knocked away by Minnesota. 
6.19 left in the second period. Sent around the boards. Bandy trying to race after it. Shakes off all good. Bandy now D to D. Finding his man in Vinnie Mirandi. Back up top looking to get in towards the rush is Jarrett Thorne. Thorne now. Leaves it inside high in the zone. Mirandi's going to pick it up. Does he have a step? Mirandi, another backhand. That one stopped by Olsen. Tested twice early. Both big saves. Shots now kind of close to even it up. 13-11. Near side all good. Tripped up. And a penalty coming up here. All good's going to get held for high sticking. As he got that stick up and onto the face mask of Lee. And Detroit right back to the power play. Two power play goals already. See if they can notch a third one. Mirandi had two glorious shots there, both on the backhand. First one obviously went high in the air off the rebound. Second one a little bit lower, but nonetheless, the new netminder for the Minnesota team, taking Casper or Brock down. And Graham Olsen having to be tested very quickly in this game. Kind of cold start because he didn't start the game mm -hmm. and didn't face a lot of the rubber before the game started either. So. Could be an interesting start here for the Olsen and this third power play. So the faceoff coming up towards the glove hand side of Graham Olsen. And it'll be held in by Simeon, firing it around the boards. He ran after it. He works it towards the half wall. He ran now to Simeon. Almost poke checked off the puck by Chatlin. Centering pass, Erat can't handle it as it bounces over his stick. Now another short-handed breakaway. In comes Christensen, one goal already. All alone, shoot, scores! Second shorty for Christensen. Puts it up and over the bluff of Blankish. And a three-goal lead restored, it's 5-2. Those short-handed goals have been the theme all morning long. And Christensen now makes, no doubt, his second one. That rather than going deep, he goes upstairs over the glove. Blankish playing the guessing game at that point. Christensen makes no mistake and restores that three-goal lead, like you said. Still have the power play, though, the Red Wings. Maybe they can net this one up, so it makes it back a two-goal spread. Five to two. You got two goals for Christensen, two goals for Williamson. Good strong performances for those two. Mirandi going to try to get two goals. Here comes Mirandi. Shot blocker saved by Olsen. Right behind him it lands. And now around the net. Pardon me, it wasn't Mirandi. 17, it was Hiringa. There's Campbell. Going to walk it in. Campbell looking back door and tipped off the stick of Schillings. Up and over the stick of Hiringa. Now knocked in. Here's Marouk. Back to his defense, trying to kill off a little more time. Schilling's pass is blocked, gets it back. Near side, and Minnesota, short-handed. Just gonna kill off some of the time, going back into their own zone. There's Hare across and sent in. Back around the net of Blankish. Poked back, looking for it with Shilgin. He gets tripped up, fans one of the call, and they're gonna get one. There's a tripping call going to Detroit, so a four on four for 37 seconds. Yeah, just losing the puck there within the, inside the blue line. It looks like it'll be... A Reed heading to the box. Blake Reed for the call. We got a timeout being called by Minnesota here. Minnesota gonna call their timeout with 425 left on the clock here in the second period. 5-2 the score with 37 seconds of 4-on-4 four four, and then a minute and 23 seconds of a, a Minnesota power play barring any other calls, of course. I'm kind of surprised as to why they call the 4-on-4, four four, maybe to give their goaltender Olsen a little more time to get warmed up, but he's just exchanging a stick, which he could have done at any stoppage of play, perhaps maybe get a little stretching in. I know I would be doing a little stretching if I was coming off a bench, but then again, I'm a little bit older than 11. So... Well, Colton Christensen, or pardon me, Colton Chatlin got the goal scoring started. Then Cade Christensen, Chase Williamson, and Maverick Shilgin are your four goal scorers from Minnesota. Christensen, of course, with two goals. So they didn't give that second one to Williamson, they gave one to Shilgin. Interesting. Chatlin with one, Williamson with one, Shilgin with one, and two for Cade Christensen. 
Well, on the other side, it's been Vinnie Mirandi and Bryce Huringa. And Christensen, the lone player with two points in this game. Just trying to help you out a bit for your three-star selection. You know, make it a little easier, give you some thoughts to ponder. This has been the most offense we've seen this morning. I think the players are maybe waking up. Those early games are a little bit uh, more defensive, perhaps, just because it's earlier in the night. Or how, I don't know. How was it for you? It was early. As out the blue line, it'll be bounced out. Here's Plude. Four on four for another 27 seconds. Kaiser. Kaiser works it back in. He can move as he shakes it to the outside. Kaiser now still with it up top. Finds his man in Alex Hare. His shot rattled off a stick. Found by Mirandi. Will send it outside the zone. Jarrett Thorne. There's five seconds left on the box before all good legs at the penalty box. And we'll get a Minnesota power play. Here's Lee. Now out of the box is all good. Power play brought to you by Kachuk Advisory Group at Scotia Wealth Management, Minnesota. And a big Ooh. hit there along the back. That's easy call for the referee standing right there. As I think it was Jarrett Thorne, the big forward. A shot coming, scores. It's Kaiser's first of the game. And Minnesota will stay on the power play. It's six to two. Yeah. Kaiser finally getting rewarded for the great skating and shift work he's got working on that left side of the wing. And, uh, just a great shot to the glove side. We're still going to see uh, a penalty for the Red Wings yep. for that body contact. A very easy call for the official to make for Thorne as he'll take two minutes. The old penalty will go to zero. The new penalty will start, and there will be a new power play for Team Minnesota with two minutes. Full two minutes. And they take a 6-2 lead here. 16-11 are the shots. Minnesota is definitely... Starting to move a little bit more away from the Detroit team, but still plenty of game left here in the second, and we still have a whole third to play as well. Second point of the game for Jack Kaiser, now with a goal and an assist as the Minnesota chant goes on again. It's been a little bit of a difficult game, not on the scoreboard, but Cade Christensen picking up an assist, so a three-point night for Christensen as well. But in terms of uh, keeping keeping the players healthy, because they had Schillings took that block on the wrist, seemed to be favoring that. The goaltender went out with a bit of an injury. And now you saw the defenseman, Hare, get hit from behind, and he was slow to get up as well. So Minnesota taking a little bit of a beating. But here is Schillings, one of those three, back on the ice. Schillings drags, fires, stopped by Blankish. On the scoreboard, though, they put six behind Blankish, so no pain there. Out comes Erat. He's got Blay with him. Long shot by Erat. Up and over the net of a reaching glove. Tried to grab it was Olsen. Now Blay on it. Battling into the corner with Williamson. Back out again for Minnesota. Good jump there by Campbell. Breaking up the play. Now he'll pick it up in. But offside is the call. That was a close one. We saw the Detroit player trying to get out. But yeah, seeing Schillings back on the ice is good news. I know he's a very, very smooth skating defenseman. A smaller fella, but moves well with and without the puck. Good to see him back out there. And hopefully uh, the other netminder for the for the Minnesota team. We're going to call him the Wild. Minnesota team. Team Minnesota. <laughs> team Minnesota. You call well, him the Wild? I was about to. <laughs> Wide around for Minnesota and hops over the stick. There of Hatman. Oh, pardon me, Easton Hansen that was. Plude at center ice. Poke checked off the puck. In comes Deskins. He's got Martin with him trying to feed and back checking on the D. Was Tate Ulrich to knock it away. Hare with it. So good to see Hare back on the ice after taking that hit from Thorne as well. Chance here. Shot stopped by Blankish. And that one off the stick of Chatlin. A battle ensues. It's bucked to the point. Plude throws it across to his winger. Chance for Chatlin. Another one in front of the net and stopped by Blankish. Nice right pad save. Lee twisting and turning. It's three seconds left on the power play. Off the wall. Chatlin back door and diving, making this desperation save was Deskins. After now end of the penalty, Plume will work it in. His shot rattles off a leg, settles into the slot and carried away by Lee. He's got a man way up there trying to call for it. And this one's going to be offside if all the way down the ice. Called icing. 
uh, against Detroit. And that was Lance who was off the bench after the penalty and almost in behind the defense with the pass a little too high and too hot. Yeah, it, was, it was a good thought, just needed to be done a couple more seconds earlier. Minnesota was able to track down Lance and make sure that he was not uh, going off for a breakaway anytime soon. But talk about Blankish making a couple of really great saves there during that power play to get some confidence back. Good right pad save, especially with two Minnesota players in front just soothing at the open play. 113 left here in the second period. It's 6-2 to two for Minnesota as Plume will work it back out. Plued rolls it down low. Reed will go back for it. All the way back out to the point. Last minute of play here in the second. Schillings couldn't hold his own. Looked like a possible two-on-one back, but Williamson is able to hustle and strip the puck. Sorry, that was Christensen. Now Reed, wrist shot, punched up into the air and caught into the glove of Olsen. Hold on to that one. Now Olsen standing up to the test. They not fall into his butterfly position using the waffle board. Steal that idea. And then glove in the rebound. Who says waffle board? Doesn't that, Gary, Thorn Gary Thorne or, or Panger it said it one of those first, two. Yeah, 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 off the waffle board. I never really liked it. I mean, back in the day, the old 80s one did look like a waffle board. As in towards the corner, it's Reed. Reed twisting and turning. I like forehander too. Like, isn't that just a shot? <laughs> forehander. <laughs> back towards the blue line. This one. Shoveled back in, Detroit holds, walking in, snap shot, that one off the blocker, and a rebound cleared back behind the net by Schillings. 17 seconds left here in the second period. Schillings will pot it into the corner, dug out, now carried nine seconds, shoots, that one had some velo on it as well, great looking shot from Vinny Miranda, or Mirandi, pardon me. Now stripped back out, Williamson. Has a goal in this game and unable to break into the zone before time expired, but 6-2 for Minnesota, and you got to be impressed with what Minnesota's been able to do through two periods of play. No, absolutely. The team Minnesota certainly having control of that game for the most part. Scoring goals, shorthanded, even strength, and on the power play. Scoring from coming in bunches from four different players. Goaltending, we're going to see a different goaltender as Olsen has started here halfway through the second, taking over. Hopefully we get... Uh, Again, not an injury report, but hopefully the injuries aren't too bad that they can continue to play the rest of this tournament because they look forward to playing this tournament so much. Absolutely. It's all about the kids. And you saw Alex Hare and Miles Schillings both return to action. Of course, the goaltender, Casper Obrachta, hasn't yet. But uh, I don't expect him to see in the third, especially with goaltenders. And got to play a tournament with seven games apiece. It might be uh, if Obrachta can't return, it'll be a busy week for Graham Olsen. Absolutely. It'll be a busy week week for this shorter roster as well. I know there's a couple of players for the Red Wings that have not or aren't lacing the skates up this morning either. But when you look at the roster, that's four players short that Minnesota has on their official roster. So we'll see how that plays out as day six and day seven perhaps begin. So it's six to two for Minnesota after two periods of play. We'll take a break and when we come back, scoring summary and third period puck drop next on ASTV. Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mountain Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment
Orleans Hotel, we have you and your family's comfort in mind. Relax in one of our 16 suites featuring king or queen size beds and 36 inch TVs. Suites also include a mini fridge and other kitchen appliances to make your stay as comfortable as possible. During your stay in Pilot Mound, visit Wiser's Restaurant, our attached family-friendly restaurant and bar. It is the perfect location to host group meals, dine with the family, or unwind after a hockey game. Come in and meet our friendly staff offering daily specials on food and drinks, wing night Wednesdays, buffet Fridays, and multiple TVs to watch the game. Wiser's is the place to be. Collins Hotel and Wiser's Restaurant and Bar, located across the street from Blackjack Stewart Arena off Highway 3 in Pilot Mound.
Welcome back inside West Edmonton Mall. Rory McGoran and Theo Tuckluck joining you for game number three of opening day of the Brick Tournament. Two periods gone. One remains, and it's a 6-2 lead for Team Minnesota. 6-2 lead. Team Minnesota definitely controlling a lot of the first two periods. But still, lots of game left. Detroit hanging their heads high. And let's see them finish out strong here. Let's see if we get this game a little closer. And it is still... Graham Olsen in net. So it was actually O'Brockton that started for Minnesota, but he went down with a little bit of an injury, and Olsen came into the second period. Has yet to allow a goal in, has Olsen. And Minnesota with six. Three points for Cade Christensen. Good start for his tournament. Two points for Jack Kaiser, and there is Kaiser right now on it. He's going to spin back to center. Fired across to the defenseman in Plude. D to D Schillings. Turned over as Reed will stop it up. Shillings pokes it to Christensen. Here's Cade Christensen going wide. Dipping around Lee. Christensen looking for three. Rebound chance. As that one, it is still blankish in net. There's no change for Detroit. It'll be sent in from Lance. And Detroit with a full sail line change. Jarvie. In across center ice. Jarvie now trying to drive around Thorne. Thorne will slip him down to the ice. Pick up the puck, fire it across, jumped on by Hare. He'll rattle it off a bottle, or off a body, I should say. As Thorne trying to muscle his way out. Or Banda, that is, the defenseman. Played back up, here's Banda. Banda goes across, D to D. Corbin up the wing, trying to get to Thorne. Turn back around, Marouk now will poke it in. Got dumped down by Banda. There's the puck straddling the blue line. Knocked a little bit deeper inside Detroit's end. Blaze. Battle inside the corner. Two for each team as we get about two minutes gone here in the third period. No whistles yet in this third period. Good pace of play as Banda will knock it up against the wall. Driven in though. Long stretch pass trying to go back door. Broken up by Corbin. Here comes Mirandi. He's got a goal for Detroit already. What a move, Vinny Mirandi, and back checking. I believe that was Tate Ulrich getting the last little poke check on Mirandi. Yeah, Mirandi's using his speed, his body really well for Detroit. Just couldn't finish it off with a good play. Erat turns it over. Shot that one stopped by Blankish. Backhand shot never made its way. There's Laird dumping it all the way outside the zone. Is Bennett Campbell. Ulrich from Minnesota will go D to D. Moved back to Ulrich on the near side. High off the glass. In behind Campbell. Trying to race for it. Campbell's there. Simeon's there. He played inside. Back behind the net. Almost driven back out. Trying to get to it was Blake, or pardon me, Miles Marouk. As Marouk now walks off the wall, his shot up to the point. Plude will send it back in after it. Trying to keep it in is Maverick Shilgen. He's got credit for a goal today as well. I believe that was the deflection goal with Shilgen. Got that one up and over the leg of Blankish. He's back out of the zone. Campbell fires it in, heads off for a line change. And back now comes Ulrich. Ulrich will fire it across ice. Bounced over the stick of all good. Down low. Looking to bring it out is Christensen off the bench. Hops over a stick. Back for it goes Schillings. Schillings now going to pivot around. Near side for Hansen. Hansen. Touch pass into the slot. All good's there. So was Chatlin. As this one bounced in, almost fouled by Lance. Out of the zone, Lee, drop pass, broken up, and Mirandi, or probably that's Hiringa, will touch the puck and an offside call against Detroit. 11-15 and a good pace in the opening four minutes here in the third period. No goals yet in the third. First whistle of the third period, but good moving, good skating by both teams. Just haven't seen a finish yet to get behind the net. Now trying to fight this one out of the zone is... Minnesota, it's brought back in by Hiringa. He's got Corbin behind him, trying to hit it a little bit too far and rolls back out to center ice. Here's Corbin. Lifts it up ahead of the stick of Chatlin. Reed gonna follow it up inside the zone. Hiringa takes the lane, fires it. Looking short side on the blocker, but just missed the net. Chatlin now up for Hansen. 
Looking to power that one outside the zone. Blocked by Hearing. A second opportunity. Detroit holds again. Here comes Corbin. Corbin in wide. Fires this one. Just low, trickling. Goes wide of the net. Battling there is Colton Lance. Back behind with Schillings, the defenseman. And now carry to the blue line. Not out though. Detroit once again. Third time kept it in the zone. Defense now going to try to get a line change in on the fly. Here comes the puck. All good blows a tire. Reed will drive down. Reed in. Looking to pass it back door. Down is Schilling's puck is loose. Shoots. Did it get through the legs? No, it's going to be saved by Olsen. And finally, Minnesota might get a little bit of a break there as Detroit was all over them in the last minute and a half. Yeah, definitely hounding them in their offensive zone where the Junior Red Wings, I thought there was a little gap there between Olsen's mm -hmm. pads like you saw. And that puck was going to slide right through, but to no avail. It didn't have enough mustard. It stayed in the blue paint. And we get a face off to the right of Olsen who stood up pretty well. No goals let alone so far on the goalie dressed in black. As working it out now is Christensen. 6-2 the score for Minnesota. Couple shorthanded goals. Three shorthanded goals I believe for Minnesota. A power play goal as well. They're rolling it all the way outside the zone. There's Banda. Long stretch pass finds Vinny Morandi. Morandi will work it in, dragging it at the top of the circle. Now a little rudder move between the legs. Morandi in, fires in this one off a leg. As Morandi's shot was blocked by Hare. Back the other way came Plude. He was turned around by Morandi. He's been impressive, hasn't he, on Detroit, Vinny Morandi. He's been very good. Very good with his body, very good with his speed. Here comes Blay. Blay across, hits the leg. Following up, though. Is Thorne, Morandi calling for it. Thorne tried to get it to him, but blocked up another one. This one hit Hare. Minnesota has been hemmed in their zone for the duration pretty much here. This third period, we played six minutes now. Yeah, working it out is Jarvie. He'll get to center and fire it in before heading off for a line change. Campbell going to collide here with Kaiser. Campbell wins the battle, pokes it around. Vinnie Morandi will pick it up. Dips across center, gets around Williamson. Now Williamson fights it back out to center ice. Lee on it. Poke checked in Williamson, trying to go wide, in from Williamson, shoots, scores! What a shot from Chase Williamson, second goal of the game, third point, and it's 7-2. to Yeah, Williamson was able to just grab the puck just on the other side of the red line here from Lee, outreached him on the loose puck, coming in. Don't know if Blankish really had his net. He looked like he was too much towards one of the posts and left the far side wide open. Williamson was able to take it in there and go upstairs. Make it a 7-2 hockey game for Team Minnesota. A lot of that play, like you said, where he was in Detroit's offensive zone. But there you have Minnesota just breaking through and scoring the first goal of the third. A shot coming from Lance, hitting the pad there of Olsen, and he'll smother it up. We originally thought that Williamson had two goals. They ended up giving credit to Shilgen. So Williamson now with two goals on the night, no assists. So two points for Williamson as this one brought back out. As back in comes All Good. I don't know who the assists on that goal is. Unassisted for Williamson. Another chance at the side of the net. Rebound, scores. Eight to two for Minnesota as Getting the tally is Easton Hansen, his first goal of the game. And Minnesota continues to put on the offense. Yeah, Easton Hansen able to grab that loose puck just as Blankish was stretched out, taking out the bottom eight inches of the net, but Hansen was able to put it above the pad to make it a 7-2 hockey game. Did we find out if Christensen got the brick hockey, Gordie Howe hockey, hat trick yet? Uh, does Christensen have a penalty? Then yes, he does. Then we have a, we have a Gordie Howe brick hat trick. That's right, a penalty, a goal, and an assist. Cade Christensen, three points on the night. Williamson, two points. Kaiser, two points. And a bunch of other singles for Minnesota as they're looking for more. And Christensen trying to find the hat trick. Hansen going to get the assist. I believe Chatlin probably are going to get an assist on the latest goal. Jarvie now in with a shot stopped. Uh, Jack Allgood picking up the assist on the goal. That's the lone assist being given out, and that's the second point of the night for Allgood as well. Yeah, Allgood Two definitely assists. had a well-rounded goal scoring and assist by the Minnesota team, which is something we're going to watch for throughout the week because that is what you need to win 
through your round robin and into your championship games. You need goal scoring from not just one or two guys. You need goal scoring from a group, a plethora of skaters. Well, Reed's going to break it back in for Detroit. Send it into the corner. After it goes Schillings, it'll bounce Hiringa for Detroit. Down, battling around with Plude. Reed twisting and turning. Looking to fight that one towards the net, but Schillings will take it back around. Sends it to the line. Lee holds it. 727 left here. In the third period, Minnesota up 8 to 2. They also lead the shot total 23 to 14. Williamson takes a little bit of a bump there. And Shilgin going to try to get in, but offside going to be the call. Didn't allow Williamson to come back out of the zone and a stoppage of play. Yeah, Williamson a little upset that uh, yeah, the official got in the way. Couldn't call a penalty eight feet off the blue line, but he did nonetheless. Reminder, next game coming up. It's puck drop scheduled for 12.30. Montreal Canadiens versus Team Pennsylvania. Well, that will be the fourth out of nine games today here to open up the 2012 birth year of the Brick Invitational, 33rd annual Brick Invitational. And it's back into the corner. Sent out. Here's Hare, Alex Hare, looking to hold in the zone. Runs right into Lee, and Lee will pick it up. Clear it out through center ice. Lee, nice little move to shake off Chatlin. Lee still bringing it in. A poke check knocks him off the puck. Looking to flip it up and out of the zone. Doing so was Miles Marouk. Hard off the glass. Near side. Reed picked up by Alex Hare. Hare, the defenseman, has Morandi right on him. Will shake him off. Now stretch center pass. Almost connected there. In with Jack Allgood. But up and over the stick. And an icing call against Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota's working still on their offensive game for the third period, but also watching them play here the last several minutes, they are really watching their back checking and sticking with the players without the puck, making sure they are covered, goal side as much as possible. And it's a really, it's a really nice part of the game to see these young players continue to practice at a young age. Here's Blay with a shot, that one off a leg. And rattles now outside the zone with help. Christensen breaking it in. Christensen with a backhand shot. Rebound chance. And Kaiser looking for his second goal of the game. Two for Christensen, two for Williamson. And Kaiser's been dynamite as well. Back into the corner for Kaiser. Knocked away by Simeon. Simeon will carry it to the line. Not out. Held by Christensen. Picked up by Kaiser. Two on one now. Kaiser. Jarvie back for Kaiser. Shoots. Pushed it wide. What a passing play though by those two. Detroit will lead it back out. Here's Thorne. Jared Thorne wide inside the zone. A pass for play. Cross ice. Finds Mirandi. Trying to cut back in towards the slot. And his shot just goes wide. Opportunities on both ends. Near side. Corbin knocks it against the wall. Trying to be found and worked back up. There was Maddox Blay. Corbin shot off a leg. That one blocked by Schillings. He's put his body on the line a few times too, hasn't he? He's going to have to find the hot tub in the ice pack. See a little contrast therapy after this game. Rebound chance, and they score. This one knocked in by Jarrett Thorne, his first of the tournament. And Detroit with their third goal. It's 8-3. to three. Got no quit in the team in red at all. Jarrett Thorne finding the loose puck in front of the net. And able to squeak it by Olsen, who's been perfect up until this point, filling in for Obrachta. But nonetheless, great to see the Red Wings continue to fight and keep putting the pucks behind. 8 to 3, 509 left in this match. But definitely a confidence builder for that one, knowing that there's a lot of game left and a lot of tournament left for both teams. Detroit looking for more. As that one sent in off a body, knocked back in. The shot taker was Brennan Martin. Erat trying to get in. Here comes Deskins. Rolling puck, settles it down. Sharp angle shot off the side of the net. Banda at the top. He'll fire one in. So Jared Thorne getting credit for the goal. And unassisted again is going to be the call on the ice. So just Jared Thorne as back to work goes Minnesota. Stick lift in the corner. Looking to battle it out. Trying to anyways was... Maverick Shilgin tucked back inside the corner. At the line is Hare. He gets poke checked off the puck, and this one will escape his own. Under five minutes to play is 420. And Marouk will bring it back in. He's got Williamson and Shilgin. The shot blocked up. That one hit Panda. And back for Detroit to try and get out of the zone. Can't. Held in by Hare. 
Alex Hare, another talented defenseman here. He takes a hit there on the far side, and there is going to be a penalty. It's going to Detroit as Hare, the second time he was the recipient of a body contact and drawing another penalty. This time it's Banda heading to the box. Yeah, Banda's a little bit bigger than the two gentlemen, too. Yeah. Went in there with a bit of a thud. And uh, that's an easy call for the, the brick linesman to make. Mr. Lawrence, two minutes for body contact or boarding, as they called it, or less. So off the face off, it'll be spinning around. Jack Allgood trying to get towards the point for Schillings. Allgood now takes a little bit of a bump there from Simeon. Yeah, this one smacked all the way down by Lance. Lance giving Allgood a shove on the way back. As Schillings will play it out. Power play brought to you by Kachuk Advisory Group and Scotia Wealth Management. All good. Will go down the right wing. Simeon stuffs him up at the blue line. Now whips it back in. 3.30 left in regulation. All good. Taps into the zone. Hustling back forwards. Campbell. He's got his defensive partner in Blake Reed around the boards. Now near side. All good. All good. Walks the line. Trying to drive in. His shot. That one rattles off a leg. Back into the corner. Scooped up by Chatlin. All the way across. There's Schilling's shot in front, scores! All good with another one, but how about the assist from Schilling's? That might be his fourth assist of the night. I think the word I would use is unselfish. I mean, Schilling's is just the absolute quarterback in that entire 22nd hold, and he finds All good, and unfortunately for the Red Wings, All good just puts it behind the net. Great play. I mean, Schilling's all game. I mean, he's been fantastic. Ice packs needed. Blocking uh, shots. Blocking shots. <laughs> I mean, skating circles. He's a great little skater. Looks fantastic on the ice. Now a shot coming in from Mirandi. And sent back out. Po checked off the goalie. Thorne trying to hold it in. Can't. Here comes. Chatlin, I believe. Part of me, that was Hopeman. And swung back out. Here's Plume. Plume, nice little move. Shakes free, now driving down the left wing. Lee will poke him off the puck. Two twenty-three left here in the third period. Boys, is there a little mic malfunction? Twenty-four to fifteen, the shots on goal favoring Minnesota. As it's back to the point, D to D Hare. He'll try to get it to his man in Tate Ulrich. A shot to the point. Blank is down, and he'll smother it for a whistle. Nine to three. Now the score for Minnesota. Get another look at your stats update here. As Team Minnesota, a lot of them pouring it on. I think Miles Schillings only has credit for one assist, but you might need to get a little stack corrector there because I'm sure he has more. And another one at the side of the net gives Minnesota 10. As this one, Maverick Shilgin, his second goal of the game, I think was the one who knocked it home. A tough night for Blankish in net. But Minnesota has just been too much to handle offensively. Absolutely, there's just too many white jerseys unmarked in front of the net for Blankish. And I mean, for Minnesota, they've really worked hard on their defensive game this period, but also because of that, they've just been able to get more offensive chances, able to gobble, gobble up loose pucks. Shogun with his second of the night to make it 10-3. So two minutes remaining in the game. Minnesota looks like they're gonna be a difficult to handle for any team here in this tournament. A good balance from the team. That's the thing I like about the Minnesota squad. Like we said, we've mentioned five or six names several times, yeah. and that's a great thing to see early on in this tournament, knowing you've got a lot of talent and a lot of goal scoring from all parts of the game. Well, I mean, even a guy like this and Alex Hare, who is just so steady on the back end, you don't maybe mention him in the flashiest regards, but guys like that are gonna complete your team. And then you got that top line. Williams in a turnover is all good, gives it right up. Vinnie Mirandi a chance. 
As part of me, that was Martin with the shot. Brennan Martin almost tucked one in. Another long drive. Martin diving at the loose puck. This one kept out by Olsen. He's been good as well coming in in relief. Only allowed one goal did Olsen. As Iraq trying to swipe at it, it's bounced outside the zone. Banda lost his stick, Simeon on it. Deskins trying to drag it in the zone, does. Now forced right back out. Just over a minute left, Deskins battling with all good. Stripped off the puck, in for Ulrich. Up ice, all good. Simeon, now far side. Catching an edge and dropping down to the ice was Hiringa. Last minute of the play here is Lance. Top of the circle, trying to drag it wide. Nice little move by Lance, working it in. Chamberlain trying to get after, probably Chatlin. Back around the net for Lance, in front. Here go the one-timer, stopped by Olsen. Nice save there, Olsen, but a good looking pass from behind the net. A little bit of skirmishing afterwards. The Deskins, I think it was. A Deskins push. trying to dust it up a little bit with the Minnesota player, but quick to put a stop to that was the official. And I see a box, two boxes now open. And they're gonna send Deskins and Allgood in towards the penalty box. Three point night for Allgood as well. Yeah, I mean, just great skating all around by both squads, but Minnesota's been able to find that open space a little better and putting a, you know, just better finish to the plays that they're able to do. Holtman leads to Jarvie. Holtman slipped up into the zone. Would have been offside. Now Christian gets knocked down. 30 seconds left in this one, and Team Minnesota, though, puts up double-digit goals against Detroit. They're going to pick up their first victory. So all good, and Deskins two minutes each for roughing. A cross-ice pass, hops over the stick of Lance. It'll be battled by Holtman into the corner. Lance is in there as well. Hiringa peeled out of the pile. Shot coming from play, and that one punched up. There's five seconds remain, and Minnesota with a statement win here to open up their brick hockey invitational tournament, a 10-3 win over Detroit. There's certainly a statement to be made by Minnesota. Great all-round effort, great defensive game as well as offensive game. Balanced scoring. We talked a lot about these coaches prior to this month having interviewed some of them and talking to some of them about putting an all-round team together. And Minnesota is that force perhaps to be reckoned with. But understand, Detroit, you guys have a long tournament ahead and lots of opportunities still to play at the Brick 22. Well, this game was brought to you by Carmel Transport. We'll have the next one coming up in moments time. Probably a quick flood and right back onto the ice with Montreal Canadiens and against Team Pennsylvania. Will be game four of nine as we let Theo go and interview the three stars of the game. It was a 10 to three win for Minnesota over Detroit. And three points for Christensen, three points for all good. Schillings with a pair. Same with Williamson, two goals. So we'll find out who's in your three stars of the game selection. Vinny Mirandi as well was very good for Detroit. Let's get to a little period scoring summary, a game scoring summary. As it started in the first period, Colton Chatlin got the game's opening goal. 9.02 left here in the first. Jack Allgood with the assist. Then Minnesota made it 2-0. Cade Christensen's first of the game, unassisted. Finished off the first period by Chase Williamson scoring the third goal for Minnesota. Alex Hare and Miles Marouk on the assists. Minnesota made it 4-0 with Maverick Shilgan from Jack Kaiser. Then Detroit with two straight goals. Vinny Mirandi from Jarrett Thorne. Bryce Hiringa from Blake Reed and Colton Lance. It was 4-2 as Detroit tried to bid a comeback. Uh, Minnesota then with two goals right after that made it 6-2. Cade Christensen shorthanded again. The third shorthanded goal for Minnesota as that one unassisted. Made it 5-2. to Jack Kaiser got into the goal scoring party assisted by Cade Christensen. That made it 6-2. to Williamson in the third period scored his second goal of the game, 7-2. to Team Minnesota made it 8-2 to off the stick of Easton Hansen. Jack Allgood, another assist. Detroit, 8-3. to Jarrett Thorne, unassisted. Then another power play goal for Minnesota. Jack Allgood again from Miles Schillings and Tate Ulrich. And final, the 10th one, Maverick Shilgan from Alex Hare. So how about the points building up for Team Minnesota? As you had three points for Christensen, three points for Allgood, two points for each Shilgan, Williamson, Kaiser, and Hare. 
And then Chatlin, Hansen, Ulrich, Marouk, and Schillings all credited with one. Kasparo Brockta got the start in net for Team Minnesota. Faced 10 shots and allowed two goals. And then Olsen came in in relief as Vinnie Mirandi gets your third star of the game here for Detroit. And Minnesota with a 10-3 victory. Mirandi finished off with one goal. Jared Thorne had a goal and an assist as he got in on both or two of the three. As Miles Schillings now, second star. What a dynamic defenseman is Schillings. And blocking shots, setting up. I think he was a little short-changed in terms of points in the game. Because he only had one assist, but I think he had more like three or four. And Cade Christensen getting first star of the game. Christensen the first star, Schillings the second star, and Mirandi the third star of the game. And a 10-3 victory here for Minnesota in game number three of the Brick Invitational opening day. And Minnesota goes 1-0. They'll pick up three points and join the Toronto Bulldogs. Of course, in the last game, Connecticut Junior Rangers get two points with an overtime win. Toronto Pro Hockey was zero, Detroit was zero, and the Regina Junior Pats will get one point after taking the game with Connecticut in overtime. And now we'll head down to ice level, who is joined with Vinnie Mirandi, and that's Theo Tuckalock. Vinnie Mirandi here with one goal for the Junior Red Wings. Vinnie, how did it like feel playing in front of them all? Felt awesome. Right on, I got a quick question for you. What is, your, what is the reason for... It suits you good. You did well. Good job. Enjoy the rest of the tournament. Thank you. Up next, let's get Mr. Miles Schillings. Miles, come on over real quick. Miles, I'm going to duck down a little bit. Or I'm enough to lift you up. I don't know. You wear a fantastic. Or why do you wear your number? I don't know who this Connor McDavid kid is, but I like your real Capri Sob. Great. Look, keeping a krill, right? Yeah. He's a Minnesota boy. Well, enjoy the rest of the tournament. Keep smooth skating. You have a fantastic game. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and our first star of the game, Mr. Kate Christensen, two shorthanded goals. Kate, I got to ask you, do you enjoy skating with more players on the ice or the shorthanded variety? I don't know. It's sometimes fun and sometimes not. But. I got to ask you about your blackouts. Did you guys have them all made for this tournament? Yeah. Fantastic. That's great to hear. Enjoy the rest of the game. Congratulations. Have a great rest of the day. That's all for the boys tonight. Our three stars will be back right after the commercial with the next game. Oh,